forging cyber, forging cyber security. Secure Ninja. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I'm here at RSA 2014 in San Francisco. We are in the North Expo Hall and I'm speaking with one of my favorite interviewees, Chris Hadnagy. He is the chief human hacker at Social en Social Engineer. Social Engineer Incorporated or social-engineer.com. <laughs> I was, Social Engineer Incorporated, it's fine. Right, I was yeah. trying to give the company name and yeah. the URL together, yeah, yeah. so social.engineer, social-engineer.com. Yeah. How are you, Chris? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. Now, you just got here to San Francisco, you just got to yep. RSA, and I was your first priority. You were. With I me. Just walked in the door, I didn't even say hi to my people, and I just texted you. Beeline, where is yeah. Security where, TV? Where, where are they? I need them. Absolutely. <laughs> um, now, we love speaking with you because you, you, know, you do social engineering, you know a lot about body language and the, you know, reading people's signs and stuff. First of all, let's see, how does social engineering play into the cybersecurity world? I think it has a huge implication. Um, when we look at a past history of scammers, con artists, uh, malicious social engineers, especially those who do impersonation or phone work, um, they use their nonverbal body language to make someone else trust them. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the more we understand about it, the easier it is for us to defend against those attacks. Right. I think it has a huge implication for security. Right. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of the uh, penetration tests have to do with social engineering just yep. as much as they have to do with anything technical. Yep. Um, so now, and you're here at RSA for a book signing. Mm -hmm. You have a new book. It's called Unmasking the Social Engineer, the Human Element of Security. And you were so kind to send this to me in yeah. advance so I could read through it. And, and you've already, you've already done have. a lot of damage to it. That's great. I have. <laughs> I did some highlighting. And yes. my next, the next damage I'm going to do the book is having you sign it. Oh, no. <laughs> after this. So tell me, tell me a little bit about this book. Sure. So after my last book, I wanted to, to come out with something that was more on the scientific level to help uh, people who are interested in social engineering or learning about social engineering, how to use it and also how to defend against it. Right. So my passion was to learn about nonverbals. And I thought, how can we blend that? And to me, the only option was to go to Dr. Paul Ekman. He's the guy who kind of created the research into microexpressions and body language. And uh, he helped collaborate with me and one of his chief guys, Paul Kelly, um, to, to, to write this book. So I just started working out a framework of what I thought it would take to understand nonverbals when it comes to security practices. Right. So we went from everything, from the head to the toe. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of people understand basic body language, but micro expressions, what exactly are those? So these are um, involuntary responses, muscular responses to emotional triggers. They, they only last 1 25th of a second and we can't control them. So it's unlike a macro expression where like, you know, we see each other and we smile right. and we do it. But a micro expression is something that we do involuntarily because maybe we see something that we don't like or that makes us happy and our face shows that emotion automatically. Right. So learning to read those, you can read what someone's emotional content is without having to really get deeply involved. Right. Um, give me an example of how that might be useful in, say, a penetration test. Excellent. So I had a, a I can think of a story that's actually in the book. Um, I had one account where I walked into a front desk and the woman was just really sad looking. And you know, as soon as she sees me, she puts on a macro expression. I go, hi, how can I help you? You know, uh, what's your name? What can I do? And I, but I saw in her face that she was sad. Right. So I said, oh, is everything okay? You look like you're upset. And she says, well, I just lost my earrings. And my husband gave them to me for my anniversary, and oh. I'm looking everywhere, and there's only one. And, and this, like, you can't make this stuff up because it was not something planned. Right. And I just started helping her look for it, and it happened to get stuck on, in, her, in her sweater, on oh, her shoulder. Yeah. So I saw it, and I said, oh, well, look, it's right there on your shoulder. And she found it, she was so happy. And then she's like, well, what were you here for? I'm like, oh, you were just going to give me a badge for HR. And she just <laughs> did. She gave me the badge, and I was through the door. So it was um, being able to read that helped me understand that she wasn't really being happy right. and with my agenda, but she was sad, and I was able to use that to, to right. influence her. And if you didn't know she was sad, you might have treated her differently I and not as Might have went in with my target, and that's it. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Now, this is not your first book. It's actually your second. Your first book was Social Engineering, the Art of Human Hacking. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about like the difference between that book and this one. Yeah, there's some major differences. So for me, the first book was the framework of what social engineering is. All the physical, psychological, and physiological principles that make up a social engineer. You know, the principles of influence and rapport and uh, the tools that are 
used by social engineers. This book now just focuses on one aspect, which is our nonverbal communications. And it takes it from a very scientific level. A lot of research is in this book. I've used research from some of the greatest minds in history, and then uh, applied it to security. Right. So instead of looking at the overall picture of social engineering, this just focuses on nonverbal communications. Now I always love the the examples of nonverbal mm -hmm. communications that that you know you shared with me before, and we were just talking about how there's mm. so many people here at RSA, yeah, tons. and they're very interesting to watch because yes. so many different you know business transactions there are going are. on. Um, do you, is any does anyone kind of stand out yeah, as you know boy. exhibiting? Uh, any tells or signs? Well, this is interesting. So this uh, gentleman here in the gray pants, um, and talking to the gentleman in the black pants, if you watch his foot placement, what will be interesting is every now and then I just looked over and he's kind of going on the side, the guy in the gray pants going on the side of his foot. Uh, that's like a low confidence posture, you know, like I'm not really sure. You kind of see like kids do that when they're right. like not really sure. Yeah. And yet the guy next to him in the black pants is pointing his toes up. Now he hasn't done it yet. Let's hope they can do it. Oh, and, oh, oh we're seeing toe raises. Any kind of high toe raise is a high confidence display. Right. You know, it's kind of like standing up taller. You know, making yeah. yourself taller, saying I'm bigger, I'm confident. And um, when I looked over, I saw it, but now they're not doing it. So let's just see. Also, another thing to notice is there's three of them in that conversation, and yet the guy in the black pants is really interested in the older guy, the balding older guy across the right. kind of path there. Uh, because his focus is directly there, and he's not including the other guy, which it would be more like this if we were including, you know, right. if we were including everyone here in our conversation, we would be like this, but right. we're like this, so this is the it's conversation. One on one. Yeah. And that's what it looks like when we analyze that conversation. We're shutting the other guy yeah, out. Yeah, let's see if there's any other interesting ones. Well, here comes a cop of some sort. <laughs> oh, look at her, hand manipulation. Yeah. So the police officer is walking up, she's doing this with her hands, She's cracking her knuckles. She just had her fingers totally manipulated like that. Right. That's usually, now when someone does it for long periods of time, you know, not just cracking their knuckles, that's usually a sign of discomfort. Someone who's a little uncomfortable with maybe what's going on. So look, like she's grabbing like one of those... Uh, zip ties. Yeah, zip ties. I don't know what's going to happen there. We might want to follow her. This may be a good story. <laughs> yeah, right? Seriously. <laughs> Last year, she's grabbing a zip tie and, and had some serious, uh, look like stress on her face as well as the the hand manipulation. That was a good pickup though, Alicia. Yeah. Because that was nice that you know you picked her out of the audience and saw. Let's just see if there's any others that are you know nowadays also what makes it more difficult is people need to interact with each other to read nonverbals. Uh, but what's interesting is when you watch someone, if we can find someone like this, this would be epic, who's standing up against the wall with their cell phone alone. Right. And you'll see them texting and then they'll smile or laugh out loud to themselves. Right. And what happened is they're communicating with that person on the phone. Right. Um, Non-verbally and they're actually smiling and maybe not even, no one around them, they don't care who's there. Right. But they'll be looking at that text and go, <laughs> like, that's great. And they're non-verbally communicating with their phone. Right. Which is just, yeah. to me, is just an epic thing to see all the time. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, really interesting. You can almost figure out who they might be texting. Right. Is yeah. it their wife? Is it, you know, their That's boss? That's an interesting, uh, yeah, interesting. So there's some research done by a doctor called Paul Zak, who does research into oxytocin. And uh, he found that when people were Facebooking or texting people that they loved, it increased this molecule in their brain, which develops trust and rapport. Wow. So you, you actually, you see someone acting like that. Uh, on their phone and they're texting and they're smiling, they probably have a lot of oxytocin in their system and that would be uh, usually a key indicator when con men or scam artists come up and try to infiltrate because someone's happy. As opposed to sitting there like this with their phone, now I'm mad. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with you, right? Right. But when uh, when you're happy, well, now I may be able to get into your into your circle and then make you do something you shouldn't do. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now going through your book, there was um, a part about you know different different types of. Um, just kind of way you perceive people. Yes. And one of them was the uniforms that mm -hmm. people are wearing. Which right. Think about it. That that woman that you just picked out, the, the woman police officer, yeah. if we had a uniform like that, we'd be able to walk. I mean, no one stopped her at the front here asking to scan her badge, right? right. So right. that uh, that adornment makes her the authority in this room. No one's going to stop her and say, hey, what are you doing here? She's a police officer. You just let her go. Right. And when you do that in a company, you have a, a security officer or someone with a clipboard. Um, I use uh, garbage men all the time. People just ignore you, and they allow you right through the building because you have that adornment. It's like the social proof that I am who I say I am. Right. Do you think people trust that far they, too often? They do. They do. I mean, think about how many times have you ever went outside when your gas meter guys there, your electric meter guys there, and said, "Hey, are you really from the gas or oil company?" Or <laughs> nobody does that, no. right? But it's awkward. It, but it is the way that, that that some companies have been hacked. Right. Is by having people come to their building and taking notice, taking pictures because they were the electric guy, 
or they were the gas meter guy and then having access to their buildings. Right. Nobody questions it because they look just like the park. Yeah, absolutely. And then, let's see. Oh, manip manipulators, which I, I made my own notes. Fidgeting, basically. Yes, yes. Yeah, so actually, we just, a great example is what we saw that woman police officer doing. Right. She was standing there and she was like, she actually had her hand twisted really bad at one point. And that's usually a sign when it happens for a long period of time. Uh -huh. So now we're not talking someone who just cracks their knuckles a little bit. That's not usually a manipulator. But when you see it in conversation, so like if you and I were talking and you asked me a question and I started playing with my ring or yeah. doing this or, you know, I'm nervous. I'm, not, I'm uncomfortable at this point. You ask me something. I can't answer right. and that would be a display of that you know I try to keep my face looking like I'm confident but you can see it here you right know? or like in that guy you can see it with the feet so now this is interesting now if we take a look back at this guy here our two friends here in the gray and black pants the other man left and uh -huh. yet the man in the black pants still has not turned towards his friend Right now, imagine right. if you and I were in a conversation, but I yeah. was just facing like this the whole time. <laughs> right? <No. laughs> if I was just facing away from you the whole time, it would be like, well, you're really interested in talking to me? Right. And that's what's happening here. It's like there, he's not. And this guy, the other guy in the gray pants, is really inching in, trying to say, hey, look, talk to me. Right. And, it, and, he's, and look, there we go, high toe display. Yeah. On the black pants, the guy just did high toe display. The guy yeah. in the gray pants is doing the side foot. So we're, we're seeing a couple of interesting displays right here in front of us. Oh, there we go. High toe display, high confidence. He is showing a high confidence display whatever that conversation is going on over there. Absolutely. Yeah, so we're, you know, when you stand back and you observe people, like if that, I hate to be malicious, but if that was our target group right there, right. That, and I wanted to come into that group, right. it would be better for me to go after the guy in the black pants as a subservient. So okay. to come in like I don't know as much, to come in as, hey, you know, I heard you are the master at whatever. Can you show me something or teach me something? He'd be more receptive he to that would be because more you receptive. know he's a confident and person. And I can tell that he's the leader of the group just by how he's standing. Now, if, if you really knew a lot about body language, which you do, is it possible to actually kind of use your body language to lie? Mm, very much. So that was actually part of the research in the book, uh, something called amygdala hijacking. So amygdala is a small part of our brain that processes emotion. Right. And you get hijacked whenever you feel over-emotional. So someone says something really mean to you and, and you get sad and then you snap back and maybe you send an email or a text or you even say something and later on you go, oh no, why did I say that? Right. That's amygdala hijacking. Now we can do that to people with the, the strongest emotion, which is sadness. The sadness builds empathy, right? So you talked about it before, the, the forehead frustration help, makes people think, oh, what's wrong with him? Is he okay? Right. And that feeling will make you want to draw closer to me and say, can I help if we're friends? Right. And if once I get you feeling empathy, then I can make you, usually influence you to take an action. Right. So we can use our nonverbals to make other people feel uh, more empathetic towards us and more helpful. Now, a really scary example of that is exactly what Ted Bundy used to do. He was a, he was a psychopath, a yeah. serial killer. He would have a cast on or crutches, and he would, he would act like he was injured, and then women would come over, oh, let me help you with your books, and then he would drug them and, and take them away. So these things work, unfortunately, all right. too well on people, even when you know there's a massive danger out there. Right. Yeah. So we're here at RSA, and this is, you know, any cybersecurity conference, it's a male-dominated industry. So there's lots of guys, very few women, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of times the guys want to, like, chat you up and get your attention and this and that. And I'm always struggling for, you know, a way to kind of just, you know, not be rude, but yep. give them some kind of nonverbal communication that yep. they can actually read that tells them I'm not interested. Yes. How can I do that? That's an excellent question. So, first of all, you have a really friendly face, and you have a great smile. Thank so you. if you offer that up to a guy at all, because we're a little thick, right. we're going to go, hey, there's a chance, right? So, right. It's not, and I'm not saying be mean, I'm not saying be rude, as you said, I don't want to be rude. But it's just that first thing when they come up and they get, you get that eye contact, you have to determine, do I trust him or not? Do I want to get to know him even more than this or not? Right. And if not, then you kind of have to just get that look and maybe like a little, yeah, that's great. So your yeah. forehead, you kind of get this like, I'm not I'm really not sure so about happy. you, right? And that to me says, mm, I don't know if I have a chance. Now, if I'm still aggressive with you, now you need to take your hips and your legs and you need to f the, the blade them away from me. Just turn so around. So you don't even, like even if you're at, we're at the same booth and you're looking at something, mm -hmm. you're now just facing away and you got the no smile face and that's epic. I am now rejected. Yes. I actually feel a little bit bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> this so, interview is over. Yes, exactly. Just like that. <laughs> and that would be, and if they're still aggressive, then you need to get like John or somebody to come and just stand in the middle of you. you right, know? But, right. But, but hopefully most guys would get it 
Yeah, there we go. I'm done. I can't even talk to her now. John just blocked me. No. So most guys would usually get that nonverbal. The problem is, is because we're humans and we like to be polite. Right. That you'll tend to be polite even when you're trying to say to a guy, leave me alone. Right. So you'll give the smile, you'll give the, the little laugh, and the guys go, oh, she's flirting. There may right. be a chance, and it's not, it's not the case. So you have to kind of turn that part off if you're really not interested right. and say, I'm not here for that. So that's a there good way go. to do it. There we go. Excellent. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. I'm going to use that. <laughs> Tell me how it works. Definitely. I will. <laughs> I will. Now, I know that, uh, you know, last time we talked to you was at Black Hat. Yep. And you were about to do a, um, a thing at DEF CON yes. with, with kids. It was a social engineering, like, Capture boot the camp. Flag. Yeah. yeah that how awesome. did that go? That went great. So we had the best turnout we ever had for, for DEF CON. And we had, um, I think it was 14 teams, so 28 kids, and they raced against the clock and each other to complete these uh, long assignments. And, and it just, it went epic. They actually said that they loved it. It was the best event they were ever at. So, so we're cool. doing another one this year. We're trying to make it harder because our first set of kids, the comp, we spent four months building these ciphers and, and, and locks and things like that. Right. And they cracked it in two hours. Four months, and these what? kids did it in two hours. So we said, okay, this year, we got to whip out all the big guns, and we got to make it really hard. It's got to be something that's really going to make the kids suffer. I mean, you know, challenge <laughs> challenge them. Sorry, parents. Challenge right, them. Right. Because it just was so much work for two hours. But the the kids are very interested. We actually have one of the, the first contestants ever. She's now too old to compete, so she's coming into DEF CON to help us run it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's how much she loved it. So, how old is she? Uh, she's uh, 16 this year. Okay, so yeah. how what is the age range of the kids so in, the, in the camp? DEF CON kids, I think, is 6 to 16, mm -hmm. but the SECTF for kids, we're saying is from 6 to 12. Right. So that way we're keeping it under teenage years. Because as soon as you get like those 14, 15 year olds competing against a seven year old, it's right. just really impossible. No. You know yeah. I mean? The poor seven year olds are always lagging behind. So right. uh, we're, we're going to keep it from six to 12, you know, preteen, and, and then really make the ciphers hard so they have to work at, at these. Right. Yeah. Do you find that children are kind of like naturally social engineers? They are. I mean, first <laughs> of all, they're great at, at, at the kids that come to DEF CON, at least their parents are really working with them. They're great at ciphers. They're great at figuring things out. Real critical thinkers. Every year, we're constantly impressed with the children that these parents are raising. Yeah. And they come and they, they critically think through these real problems. Right. I mean, last year, one of our one of our exercises was we had, we took a piece of paper and we made a skittily code, which is you write um, letters on it and you wrap it around a tube. And when it's on the tube, it spells something. But we instead of letters, we used a cipher. So we used like uh, symbols that meant letters, and they had to figure what that out. But then we took the paper and we shredded it. And then we put the shreds in a little bag, and they had to first tape the paper back together. Oh my gosh. Then wrap it around the tube, and then decipher the code. So it's like multi steps. Multi steps of real difficult procedures, and these kids figured it out and did it. That and sounds that was like really so impressed. much fun. It was really impressive. I want to come and be a kid in the social engineering <laughs> camp. That sounds you can awesome. Come help us run it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, next year at DEF CON, we'll definitely come by Excellent. and talk to you again. That'd be great. We love speaking with you about this Me stuff. Me too. I like speaking to you guys. And I look forward to I just got the book, so I'm going to finish reading it. I really look forward to it. Thanks, Thanks. for sending Thanks, it. Alicia. And thanks for talking to us, no Chris. Problem. You're Thank awesome. You. And everyone at home, make sure you don't miss any of the awesome interviews um, we're doing here at RSA this year. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel, absolutely. And uh, we even have an Instagram account now, so follow us on Instagram. I'm Alicia Webb here at RSA. Thank you so much for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.